Hello friends. Today we are going to discuss on how to start a career in homeopathic practice. So nurturing wellness and a guide to exploring all the careers in alternative medicine. And I am going to talk more and more about alternative medicine. What is a financial success? How you can become a homeopreneur? What is your path to earning hundred crores and plus? along with a lot of respect and lifestyle and uh, financial freedom. So uh, in this uh, we will be discussing how homeopathy can be a gratifying career as an alternative medicine, how you can earn respect and how you can become a homeopreneur. So in this world where holistic approaches to health and wellness are gaining popularity, Homeopathy has also emerged as a powerful and natural healing method. So my aim is to shed light on the journey of starting a homeopathy practice, the benefits of homeopathy for healing, how it can be a rewarding career opportunities in the field of alternative medicine, what are the lifestyle changes it can bring and what is the financial freedom uh, being a homeopath can bring to you so uh, first we will know some Indian market uh, healthcare statistics that uh, as per the OECD analysis uh, it is proved that uh, homeopathic healthcare market is projected to reach 638 billion dollars by the year 2025 from 114 billion dollars in 2019 so you can imagine just in six years it's going to multiply six times or you can say 4x times uh, as per the OECD analysis uh, coming to India uh, even uh, global homeopathic markets are expected to account for 15,832 billion dollars by million dollars by 2028 so all the statistics and all you can i'll post the link into this through which you can go through the uh, actual statistics of the uh, homeopathy industry so how do we start a homeopathic practice uh, so first we should embrace the healing power of homeopathy it's a system of alternative medicine that believes in the body's ability to heal itself. So it works on the principle of like cures like where a substance that causes symptoms in a healthy person can be used in a highly diluted form to treat the same symptoms in a sick person. So before starting a homeopathic practice it is essential that you understand what is the philosophy, what are the principles that guide uh, this holistic approach to healing. Otherwise, you will be lost and you will not know how to go about it. Uh, next is uh, the education and training part. So, there are, I will give you, share you some uh, links to some a few institutions that also provide uh, homeopathic uh, distance learning programs, on-campus programs as well as master's degree programs also. Uh, so, one is one of the first top priority uh, one is international academy of classical homeopathy then there is alleged Col island college of homeopathy in uk as well as in india there is the british institute of homeopathy there is the american medical college of homeopathy there is che that is the center for homeopathic education these offer a homeopathic education with a focus on a blend of theoretical knowledge as well as practical skills and they have both uh, graduate as well as uh, postgraduate courses also then there is this Hanuman College of Homeopathy uh, so all these are the institutions uh, which you can go through the curriculum the the free structure the faculty credentials accreditation status and everything and you can decide which program you want to run through for to learn homeopathy now how you can build a holistic approach so successful homeopathic practitioners often adopt a holistic approach to patient care so it's a patient centric approach where you can uh, emphasize a personalized and patient centered uh, care that will 
distinguish you from the other fields of uh, alternative medicines as well as the conventional medicines so how do you establish a professional presence so you need to attract clients to your homeopathic practice this involves creating a professional website participating in community community events a uh, networking with other healthcare professionals uh, you should be very very clear about your services what services you are giving what is your treatment philosophy and uh, you should you can also share some success stories to help build trust with potential clients what are the benefits of homeopathy for healing so uh, first of all you should know that homeopathy is a very natural and non invasive way of uh, treating uh, unlike uh, the other alternative or conventional medicines so all those who are seeking natural healing methods they are they can typically be your customers another benefit is uh, it's a personalized treatment so each one gets individualization Uh, and through detailed custom consultations and of a, of a person's overall health, his past medical history, their family history, their temperaments, their suppression, life suppressions, everything, uh, you can select uh, a personalized approach aiming to address not only the root cause but also. Uh, to alleviate the symptoms as well as to address the root cause and remove the uh, disease cure the illness and give a holistic healing to them uh, it can be complementary to conventional medicines it can be taken with the uh, homeopathic uh, um, medicines can be taken with the conventional medicine so it is very very safe and people have a broader perspective to start using them along with their own course of treatment of conventional medicines coming to the career in alternative medicines homeopathy is a very it's a, there are a lot of diverse career paths in alternative medicine and homeopathic practitioners can explore in research education and even in product development within the natural health industry so uh, there is a huge uh, diversification uh, and you should uh, select that which al- aligns to your interest and passions uh, growing demand what is the growing demand for holistic healthcare as you all know uh, there is lot of awareness going along and uh, the homeopathic uh, there is a demand for alternative medicine practitioners people who are not getting results or not ha- are not happy with uh, conventional medicines their side effects are becoming more and more uh, uh, aware about uh, the benefits of the alternative medicines and they want a meaningful impact in their life then they select alternative medicine they select homeopathy as their uh, course of treatment and as far as the personal fulfillment is concerned it's choosing a career in alternative medicine such as homeopathy often leads to extremely powerful personal satisfaction fulfillment and uh, to in helping others achieve their optimum health using natural and holistic methods so uh, the positive impact that you create on your patients on your customers can also be a driving force in maintaining a long and rewarding career in your life if you are dynamic homeopathy is for you understand one thing if your nature is dynamic if you want to move on jump on to uh, having a gratifying career then homeopathy is definitely a career for you uh, only thing is you should have the passion and belief in homeopathy you should have the commitment to long life learning uh, you should have a patient centric approach so every time you get distracted you should always come back to thinking about the patient thinking about putting yourself in their shoes understanding them more uh, going deeper into their uh, suppressions into their emotions into their intellect intellect and then giving them a personalized treatment for their overall well-being and uh, this aspect can be very very fulfilling so uh, there is also a personal fulfillment in helping others many practitioners have that and you should have an entrepreneurial spirit also of if you want to develop your private practice uh, you should be aware of the all the challenges uh, with a career in homeopathy 
and uh, you can uh, navigate through all the regulatory requirements educating the public about homeopathy and potential potential skepticism for from conventional healthcare uh, circles also there is going to be a uh, lot of challenges which you will have to face but it's quite interesting and if you know if you are aware about the challenges then you can definitely prepare yourself to face them uh, easily and smoothly uh engaging with the broader community of homeopathic practitioners attending conferences collaborating with other healthcare professionals can also contribute to a sense of professional community and support uh, in homeopathy uh, again you should be open to research and evidence based practice uh, to enhance your credibility and contribute to the growth of the field uh, you should also consider the principles and values of homeopathy whether they align with your personal and own ethical beliefs uh, only then uh, this sense of alignment can contribute to your job satisfaction so you should also consider job market considerations uh, what are the what are the demand what are the potential career career paths <clears throat> and then you should take informed decisions so uh, i will also give you some homeopathic practice tips that how to uh, individualize the treatment each person is unique the selection of a homeopathic remedy is based on a thorough understanding of the person's physical emotional and mental symptoms so uh, you have to find out for the similarity of systems uh, symptoms based on the principle of like cures like so there are a lot of uh, materia medica and repertory for you to refer while you practice so after your even while studying or after your studies when you start your practice there are a lot of reference books available and you should not feel shy to open up the books in front of your patients and refer them because it's a very vast uh, field you can say vast extensive uh, uh, material is available uh, like for example even if you are Uh, seeing a case of a headache or a migraine uh, there are more than 60 remedies and you have to select the correct remedy to uh, bring the cure so you should always use uh, materia medica and repertory and uh, i will share the link for the those resources also you uh, again the potency and dilution uh, homeopathic remedies come in various potencies uh, indicating the degree degree of dilution Uh, like how you have milligrams and grams in uh, uh, conventional medicines uh, allopathic medicines same way uh, potency is the degree of dilution that how, how much the uh, homeopathic medicine is diluted and it comes in 30 200 1 m that is like uh, senestial dilution per, uh, degrees so 1000 degree how many times it is diluted if it is diluted 1000 time it is called 1m if it is diluted 10000 times it is called 10m uh, and 50m and cm so on and so forth so uh, you should always always have uh, follow up consultation to assess what is the changes in systems and keep on adjusting the remedy also accordingly Uh, because the process is very dynamic and it evolves as the individual also progresses in their healing journey so while they are healing uh, the very first 2 uh, to 3 consultations you should take immediately have a close follow up with the patient also inform the patient that you should have a close follow up in case uh, they need any assistance they have any huge minor uh, changes also noticeable in their uh, journey of healing uh, they should bring it to your notice so that you know which rubric to select for which symptom and keep on changing the medicines uh, then follow up can be like you know weekly fortnightly monthly and so on and so forth till the uh, they are completely holistically healed 
Uh, another thing you can keep the patient engaged is through biochemical tissue remedies. Now these are all uh, salts which your uh, body cells are made up of, and they have a very complementary action, uh, bringing in cellular, giving in cellular nutrition. Like for example, if a child is having dentition uh, problems, then you can uh, supplement him with a biochemical tissue. Uh, remedy of calcarea for 6x which is a very very uh, famous uh, medicine even the pediatrics and allopathic uh, doctors also prescribe them uh, for being very safe and actually uh, giving the cellular nutrition support uh, for the child to have easy dentition so likewise you can also have uh, calcarea for 6x ferrum for 12x Uh, these are the potencies the power uh, for uh, to supplement calcium in osteoarthritis or even bone for good bone health so uh, there can be some targeted mineral supplementation also bringing in through these biochemical tissue salts like calcarea flour and uh, silicia these are the remedies which are also very handy and they can be prescribed to target those deficiencies so if you have say a tumor or if you have uh, tenderness in your breast or tenderness anywhere then calcarea flour uh, in 6x and silicia 30 in a combination would work wonders like how a spongia would work in uh, tumors uh, that's a homeopathic remedy <clears throat> so uh, biochemical tissue remedies uh, are very useful when you have to support some chronic conditions or people ask for uh, to continue the homeopathic medicine even when they are healed and they still want to continue with the homeopathic medicine i have never never given placebo or sl to anybody in my uh, lifelong practice i have always prescribed them some biochemical tissue remedies to aid them assist them with to build up on their cellular nutrition so and they are very easy to use you just have to supplement whatever is deficient so the selection also is very easy uh, also it is sometimes uh, supportive in acute uh, conditions also like ferrum force is very useful in allergic uh, rhinitis or allergic conditions and uh, you can increase the patient em- em- engagement by educating them towards the role of biochemical tissue remedies in their cellular nutrition empower them to take active role in their health so they will also start uh, taking interest you know uh, that okay you are giving them some supplementation and uh, for their better outcomes of their treatment and they feel more better satisfied and happy a uh, personalized healing through conventional medical investigations and diagnosis so you should always be open towards the uh, uh, lab investigations uh, and what are the diagnosis given out by the uh, tertiary care hospitals or the uh, super specialties of uh, chronic ailments especially chronic ailments now this will help you again you know uh, having an integrative approach and you can combine those uh, uh, perspectives or their diagnosis uh, to address the physical mental emotional and spiritual aspects of the uh, of their health and you can integrate those to give holistic healing also so sharing information collaborating with the healthcare team uh and holistic health assessment will also bring satisfaction like if they have say particular uh errors in their diagnosis or abnormalities in their lab investigations uh, after your course of treatment if they if we go and get the report again if you go and do investigations again and the there are no abnormalities seen then Uh, again you know that is also uh, a way of patient adherence and satisfaction uh, to your course of treatment your holistic health uh, treatment 
अगेन देर आर सम अदर माइंड बॉडी टेक्निक्स लाइक मेडिटेशन माइंडफुलनेस रिलैक्सेशन लाइक हाउ यू इफ समबड इज हैविंग फ्रोजन शोल्डर यू शुड ऑलवेज सजेस्ट दैम फिजियोथेरेपी सिमिलरली इफ समबडी इज गोइंग थ्रू मेंटल स्ट्रेस और इमोशनल इम्बेलेंसेज और सम साइको साइकोलॉजिकल इश्यूज देन यू कैन ऑलवेज एज देम टू मेडिटेट और गिव दैम सम एडवाइज ऑन और काउंसिल दैम ऑन दोज एस्पेक्ट्स ऑल्सो थ्रू द कॉम्प्लीमेंट्री मेडिसिन यू कैन ऑल्सो गिव दैम न्यूट्रिशनल गाइडेंस फॉर ओवरऑल हेल्थ एड्रेसिंग दे आर डायट्री इम्बेलेंसेज एंड so that will uh, in a way help them support the, even the if they are going undergoing the conventional medical treatments so there are some herbal and nutrition supplements which you can integrate them guide them you know uh, to support the body's uh, natural healing process you can also guide them for some physical activities and exercises uh, developing some passions or you can tailor them to their individual health status like what is their health status currently and what passion or uh, hobbies they can develop what recreational activities they can do gradually not it can be it cannot be implemented from day one but yes gradually it can be implemented and it will also help them uh, say for example if somebody is overweight will help them improve their bmi and lose weight and that will also give them immense satisfaction along with your course of treatment so there are also another energy healing uh, practices like reiki uh, acupuncture magnet therapy these also can be uh, used alongside uh, conventional treatments to enhance overall well being uh, you should also give them some psychosocial support especially like for diseases like alzheimers parkinsons uh, memory concentration issues so somebody who is having cerebral palsy there the family also needs to be given a psychosocial support so there are a lot of support groups going on which you can just divert them to them uh, join those group where they will have some activities uh, continuously growing and which will also aid in your course of treatment in healing them through homeopathy so patient education is very very important and Uh, you should empower each and every patient of yours with lots of information educate them about better equipment informed decisions about the health and so that you know they will be more compliant uh, to your treatment plan and adherence and uh, outcomes you should regularly monitor and adjust their dosages accordingly Uh, you should always respect patient preferences that means you should not be biased towards homeopathy if at all a patient uh, prefers or believes in another course of treatment or want to continue whatever they are already taking have faith in that you should uh, respect their decisions and have a collaborative decision making uh, so that will also you know contribute to a more patient centric and holistic approach uh one thing what i want to add here very very important is treating suppressions for optimal long term healing uh like if you do not if you ignore suppression is a must in case taking and if you ignore the past suppressions of their physical health or their uh, mental or emotional health then there is quite a possibility that their immunity of their physical or mental immunity is poor and the disease might keep on recurring back so you should treat suppressions for optimal long term healing and uh, there is a book uh, written by me a uh, quick reference to suppressions its causes symptoms and effects which is a handy reference book uh, like the repertory which you can refer like for example in that book uh, you have an example of a of a skin eruption such an eczema which was suppressed by using topical steroids now the eruption disappeared that time that but the patient starts experiencing new symptoms such as digestive symptoms or recurrent respiratory infections so in this if you are if you are having such a case you need to understand uh, the patient's history of eczema its suppression and you should select uh, remedies 
सो देर आर सम रेमेडीज लाइक सप्रेशन रिलेटेड ब्रिक्स इन रेफरीज लाइक यू नो माइंड सप्रेस्ड इरेप्शन एलमेंट्स फ्रॉम सो यू शुड सिलेक्ट द रूब्रिक्स फ्रॉम दैट एंड द गोल ऑफ दिस रेफरेंस बुक इज टू जस्ट प्रमोट ई लर्निंग ऑफ एडवांस होम्योपैथी बाई कंसिडरिंग सप्रेशन एज द फर्स्ट पैरामीटर ऑफ केस टेकिंग फॉर अ कंप्लीट क्योर ऑफ क्रॉनिक इलनेसिस सो स्पेशली वेन यू हैव अ क्रॉनिक इलनेस पेशेंट you should always refer to this suppression book and you should always ask questions about their past uh, life suppressions like if you have a did you suffer from a high grade fever from your early childhood did you have any skin eruptions were you having uh, typhoid malaria measles did you have any uh, early death of your like say father or mother or husband or son so these are all emotional suppressions also so uh, these also bring in illnesses and you should always address those issues uh, while case taking so uh, there is a new approach to analyze illness through metaphysical state um, and there because there is a connection between the mind emotions and spiritual well being uh, in relation to physical health so and uh, many other uh, alternative and holistic treatment medical treatment also uh, like ayurveda chinese medicines these also consider the met- metaphysical aspect of illness and uh, the chakras are there then there are energy centers symbolism of symptoms uh so there is some spiritual connection uh, connection and if you implement uh, holistic treatment approaches uh taking into consideration the metaphysical aspects then uh, it can also help you support uh, in selecting the rubrics and also counseling the patient because then you will know more about uh, the patient uh, going deeper into their physical mental emotional aspects and you can give a proper individualized treatment to them so these are some essential tools for practicing homeopathy like kens repertory uh, of the homeopathic materia medica uh, he is a classic reference uh, and provides detailed information about the characteristics and indications of various remedies you have the borix materia medica which is very handy written by dr william borick and uh, you should always uh, whenever you select some rubric you should always correlate it with some uh, with the borick's materia medica because it's given from mind head you know uh, organ wise like you know abdomen respiratory chest skin so those uh, topics are given uh, in every medicine what you select Uh, you should uh, correlate so, and confirm before prescribing the individualized medicine then there is synthetic repertory by dr bathel and dr clanker there is homeopathic medic materia medica of new drugs by dr o a u julian then there is boger boning hussain which is a repertory for especially uh, if you are looking out for some sensation or even the blood chapter in that is very Uh, vast and you should read it thoroughly each and every rubric so that you are in a better position to analyze and select the remedy uh, then there is uh, allen's keynote and characteristics with comparison there are uh, some repertories like complete repertory by roger van zandvoort uh, this includes all the mental mind symptoms there is kens repertory of homeopathic materia medica huh? there is dr robin murphy's repertory and uh, he is known for its more modern approach and he has included chapters like uh, clinical and cancer toxicity emergency medicines uh, in his repertory so it bec- the practice of homeopath becomes easier uh, if they are uh, taking into consideration the laboratory investigations or the Uh, conventional uh, multi specialty diagnosis then there is synthesis repertory by federic and yes how can i forget dr sr fatak's repertory 
uh, his repertory is a concise repertory his repertory is a concise repertory and we say uh, my my mentor used to say that it's a repertory to all the other repertories and you would not miss out on any uh, remedy if you refer dr fatak's concise repertory book so uh, then there are back flower remedies also uh, which you can use and uh that is very easy to use because it doesn't require individualization and it is based on only a emotional imbalances and gorse or rescue remedy is my favorite remedy in that uh but uh, i do not uh, use any other back flower remedies because it only touches a person's emotional uh, level so for people with uh, mental psychological symptoms with emotional anxiety and those type of symptoms you can always add on to the remedy but the those symptoms bringing out a physical change acute uh, changes in the body will not be healed by the back flower remedies uh, and they would have to take them very long term so uh, i would prefer a combination of homeopathic and uh, biochemic tissue, uh, back flower remedies it resonates very good with the positive qualities though but uh, mimilis is uh, associated with fear so uh, its use is intended is intended to promote courage so back flower remedies you know uh, whatever selection you are doing like for example if you are giving remedy for fear that remedy will bring in more courage to the patient so in that way they are very useful and many doctors have uh, switched to back back flower remedies because it is very easier form of practicing and there is no individualization it's very gentle and safe uh, to use also so that's it about uh, there are uh, i would like to name some few homeopaths who have been recognized and who have been had a successful uh, career path also uh, first one of him being a greek homeopath george vitulkas uh, he is known for his teachings writings and understandings and practice and he is also established the international academy of classical homeopathy another renowned and recognized uh, homeopath is dr rajan shankaran and uh, he uh, brings in a new form of periodic table and he has authored several books and developed the sensation method so uh, dr samuel hanneman you know he is the founder of uh, homeopathy and his pioneering work is uh, seminal work is organin of the medical art it you continues to be a fundamental text first text to refer in the field of homeopathy uh, then there is uh, dr luc d shepper he is a belgian homeopath and he has developed the tet- tetracytis method which is a systematic approach to case taking and analysis these are some dot methods you can get his book on amazon also and that's another tricky way to learn homeopathy there are a lot of approaches and his approach is different but i'm not aware of much aware of this but you can go through the book description on amazon then there is dr miranda castro who is a british homeopath and is recognized for advocacy and writing in homeopathic care for women and children so and she has also authored book like the complete homeopathy handbook which is also available i guess on amazon then there is dr john Sh- jan sholton uh john jan sholton uh, he has developed the periodic table of elements in homeopathy and i found out a very good remedy constitutional remedy which can go for almost all type of cancer because cancer is a form of fear fear of everything fear of death fear of health fear of illnesses fear of everything and 
one medicine what i found uh, i had printed and i had used it for my own mother is a cuprum force which is a very deep acting remedy and can be used for all types of cancer uh, and which i found it useful from john shelton's uh, contributions uh, in uh, homeopathic materia medica then uh, dr farooq master he is an indian homeopath very renowned and uh, his contribution to classical homeopathy his efforts in spreading homeopathy education is uh, well known to many uh, teachers and training homeopathic practitioners also and to many students also then there is uh, dr nancy herrick she is an american homeopath and is recognized for her expect expertise in again classical homeopathy and for her contribution to the homeopathic education then there is massimo mangale very is an italian homeopath see homeopathy is spread worldwide each each and every country you find homeopathy uh, dr hanemann was from a uh, uh, german germany and uh, massimo is from tally and uh, uh, he has uh, contributed uh, to the understanding of plant and animal remedies and has conducted uh, seminars worldwide so he is basically a professor uh, then there is jeremy sher dr praful vijaykar who just passed away but uh, his unique approach has made him a notable figure in the homeopathic community uh dr jawar shah is also based in mumbai he is the founder of the other song sorry international academy of advanced homeopathy he is a respected homeopath and is known for his global contributions to homeopathic education research and advancing the field internationally and i use a software developed by his team uh, homepath so sometimes you know i search in the books and he has beautiful diet nutrition tips and lot of uh, additional stuff for you to refer and gain knowledge then there is uh, dr mukesh uh, batra who was awarded the padma shri award and his uh, book uh, the nation's homeopath is available on amazon and there are a lot of takeaways of from his book which uh, uh, almost all homeopaths should learn should know important one of it being that homeopathy is a otc product it is not a prescription product and you can self treat yourself with homeopathic remedies as there are no side effects of that but of course a professional uh, holistic uh, what do you say case taking history taking will definitely help and uh, especially for the chronic ailments or for recurrent ailments for stress induced ailments for anxiety related ailments and for cancer and such ailments definitely you should consult a homeopath and it's better to not self treat yourself so i would like to share end with a case study of a homeopath who became a millionaire so dr rameshwar rao he was born to a farmer and he went from rags to riches by just becoming a homeopath and he earned a net worth of 1.3 billion dollars with an investment of just rupees 50000 so this hyderabad based industrial entrepreneur who travel miles on foot to attend school lost his father when he was young and he decided to lead a simple life as a homeopath but a rupees 50000 changed his life and he is now in charge of a vast corporate empire and he heads the largest cement producing business in south india and he said to generate 3000 crores in annual revenue so if you want to read more about it or if you want to know more about uh, him i will share my link of the blog and uh, in which there is a link of the economic times which has given his uh, case study also which has printed his case study in conclusion i would say starting a homeopathic practice 
pursuing your career in alternative medicine like homeopathy is a very very gratifying journey you should be able to embrace the principles of homeopathy understand the benefits of healing explore the diverse career paths within the field and it can open doors to a fulfilling and purposeful professional life and a journey of lifestyle and financial freedom so are you ready to embark on this venture of alternative medicine promoting homeopathy wellness balance and harmony in the lives of those you serve let me know your comments and subscribe and stay updated thank you very much for listening to me thank you very much for being with me and please post your comments your thoughts and your queries if any you have thank you have a great night bye bye and enjoy homeopathy